Hello, I'm Paul Gates, and welcome to The Academics. I'm here with Dr. Nancy Love of the Appalachian Department of Government and Justice Studies, Dr. Michael Wade of the University's History Department, and Dr. Dave Spiceland of our Communication Department. Donald Trump's term in office looms, and the nation asks, what now? What can we expect from an unprecedented dark horse candidate turned political victor? What of the backlash caused by his election? Is there any hope for American unity? What should Americans do to come together? Well, let's look at first what going forward. What, what are we? What can we expect from the latest developments? Uh, not just since the election, but perhaps just in the the week, the last week. It's only been a week and a half, but what? Uh, What's coming up? What can we look to for some clues as to what's ahead? Well, have I, we, I'm sorry, you go ahead. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think we have uh, anything but the barest of uh, clues, you know, the Breitbart chair of, uh, of uh, White House advising. Uh, uh, but beyond that, um, uh, you know, we've got uh, uh, Inklings that uh, uh, some of the old Washington insiders uh, will be uh, in in the cabinet uh, with uh, Giuliani and uh, uh, Gingrich, it appears, um, uh, and you know maybe even Sarah Palin uh, uh, somewhere. Uh, have, you but heard, have you heard that name? We, we, Sarah Palin. Yeah, uh, and what I mean to say is we we got a lot of speculation, uh, but we don't. Uh, you know, we can say what we want to. I think we're really all in wait and see mode. Uh, that what we can really talk about is, uh, 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 and it goes to how to bring the country together. Uh, uh, maybe um, uh, what needs doing, uh, and then we're back to uh, the debt, uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, remember, even uh, uh, Trump is on board with uh, infrastructure. Uh, and uh, 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 health care, um, and uh, those are the things we can look at, uh, but we, uh, I don't think we have any idea of what's really going to Well, there's been a couple happen. of things nailed down. I mean, we know Chris Christie's not going to be the Attorney General. Um, he, should he's be, out. he should be Secretary of Transportation. I'm, I'm holding out hope for him on that. <laughs> and Giuliani's not getting that, that job either. Of course, uh, oh, Giuliani's Rudy, not getting the job? No, Rudy is apparently um, Look, being looked at for Secretary of State. Correct. That's uh, that's the latest <laughs> word there. There's a little turmoil, I think, going on here Even, uh, among the the not getting the job crowd so far. Um, this, 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 this is like Halloween. Uh, yeah, he comes out on Halloween, doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> well, well it, go ahead. Well, you, go ahead, Dave. You go. I'll I'll be the last. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I think we have to watch those appointments really carefully. I mean, the transition does not at this point seem to be proceeding smoothly, though it's mm -hmm. always complicated. And the appointment of Bannon as chief strategist, which you mentioned, is um, very troubling to some. I mean, yes, he has a Harvard business degree. He's a former naval officer. He's been a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But he's also made anti-Semitic and racist Remarks. He is coming from Breitbart, which is a home of the alt-right. Um, wow. And then the other thing we know for sure is that Priebus will be chief of staff. Right. The, the, the Breitbart things, I mean, some of the things he's done or that you refer to are particularly alarming, like you know, glorifying the, the Confederate flag, uh, particularly in the wake of the, the murders in Charleston. Um, you're calling Bill Crystal the renegade Jew. Um, and Bill Crystal's conservative, um, and he's, he's still singling him out that way. And then there's the, the perhaps the, the thing that could, should concern women, where the Breitbart uh, headline was, um, which would you rather your child get, feminism or cancer? And <laughs> that is giving people pause. I mean, the I think the point is, and we all agree that that uh, he needs to have a chance, but uh, and, and has not obviously assumed office yet. But are we getting clues as to how the uh, administration might go from the first week? Well, first of all, have we ever been unified? 
you know, when President Obama was elected eight years ago and there was a meeting with McCain, a lot of the Republicans and Democrats, and there was some, uh, McCain said something and he said, I won. And elections have consequences. Are we ever going to be unified as far as all agreeing? I mean, I have a family, a wonderful family, that we don't agree on everything, but, you know, we still love each other. Uh, I hope that there will be more civility. Uh, it's a hope, not a prediction, mm -hmm. that we can disagree but not be disagreeable about it. And when you've got people who demonize, and both sides do it, left and the right both demonize the opposition, that just doesn't help things a whole lot. You know, to call people names on whatever side. Uh, I, I guess if, if I had a hope, if I could have a dream, it, it would be more, um, and, and again, not so much unity, but just saying, okay, here's what I believe, here's what you believe. Uh, and there's usually three or four sides to every issue, uh, and then going at it. Keep in mind, this is the first time since I heard 1928 that you've had a Republican president with both houses being Republican, uh, and not a solid majority either. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, can I have a few predictions? Of, of real course, quick? go okay. right ahead. Uh, if I had a prediction, the Electoral College is not going to go away. Uh, it's, it's in the Constitution. There have to be a constitutional change uh, to do that. And I used to be opposed to the Electoral College or not that thrilled about it, but it does serve some purpose in terms of balancing between the states, giving smaller states mm -hmm. you know, more um, visibility, if you will. I think Obamacare will change. Uh, will it be completely dismantled? I don't think it will. It's got its tentacles, and I'll use that word tentacles, into the system at this point too much. But there's some things about Obamacare, and, and I'm saying Obamacare uh, in lieu of the Affordable Care Act, um, that the Republicans could use and still, um, uh, I, th I think it would, it would serve their benefit, like having uh, parents, if parents pay for their children's uh, health care up to the age of 26 or whatever it was. Uh, that's not necessarily an anti-Republican idea. I think the taxes could very well be reduced. Um, I would like to see the death tax go away. I'm sure some of you might disagree with me on that. Um, so yeah, there are some things that may or may not happen. And it won't happen immediately. It's going to be a very slow process, if it happens at all. Well, you know the the, the death tax, as, as you, you characterize it. that, yeah. Yeah, I mean the inheritance tax, and it's one of those things you can make a lot of hay out of it if you really want to, when when in fact it affects so few states, very very few, mm -hmm. and the you know the, the the cutoff limit now is higher than it's been in a long time, and it's going to affect even even fewer, but that would be. Yeah, abandonment of that uh, that label probably would be a, a, a step maybe toward the, getting to the unity that you're describing, Dave, and you know, on, on the on the Affordable Care Act and things yeah, like I that. Yeah, I think that's very true. Uh, yeah, uh, the people I've heard talking about using that term are, are generally people uh, uh, who uh, 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 it's not ever going to be a problem uh, mm -hmm. uh, for. Right. Uh, uh, so when, when you know, when you see people of uh, uh, when people of relatively modest circumstance uh, begin to speak on behalf of uh, of uh, people who have uh, more money than they can ever possibly uh, use, uh, I think yeah, I think that uh, uh, that should be off the table. Mm. Uh, uh, some other things should be too, because if we're if there's to be any sort of unity, and I, uh, Dave's point about you know how do you you know. When have we ever been completely unified? Um, uh, but uh, there's, a, you know, there's a, uh, the uh, the years ahead may well bring rather less unity, uh, unless uh, uh, we talk about uh, things that uh, that uh, matter to the future of the country. Um, uh, and uh, you know, there's a relative. Uh, there's some big topics there. Uh, and talking about those involves saying at the beginning uh, what is off the table for that particular discussion about the uh, welfare of the nation. Uh, and uh, that leaves people entirely free to have their opinions, to talk about uh, them as much as they want to, just not in that uh, venue. 
I, I thought one of the most valuable things Bernie Sanders uh, did was, in effect, to uh, uh, you know, open a national discussion, uh, which got shut down promptly when uh, Hillary Clinton got the uh, uh, got the nomination. But it's still sitting there, uh, infrastructure, uh, jobs, uh, uh, climate change, um, uh, uh, spending uh, 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 slash taxation. Uh, somebody's got to pay the bills uh, in the final sure. analysis, uh, and. Uh, uh, you have to go where the uh, you have to go where the money is uh, uh, for openers. So you can't take it out of people who don't have it or can't afford it, uh, especially not in a consumer economy. Uh, but I mean, there's a, there's a fairly discreet list there, and if there was actually conversation, uh, uh, and uh, we we took some of the uh, frankly less important and more explosive issues off the table, uh, we might actually get somewhere. You know, people might look across the aisle and discover, yeah, I could actually talk to that person about uh, uh, about that. Um, and, and of course, the one term you haven't used there, Mike, and I think the only one that you haven't brought up is is the the need for compromise in some in some is areas, on some issues, um, the way progress is is made. If if everything is just too hard and fast, there's going to be... Well, there has to be that, uh, uh, and there's got to be some smart, uh, uh, some smart thinking along the way instead of... Uh, uh, what, what compromise has come to mean in this uh, political culture uh, is uh, uh, we find some way to meet halfway on things that uh, sometimes you can't meet halfway mm -hmm. uh, uh, on. Um, uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, in, in this in in in, uh, in the real world uh, that we live in. Uh, uh, there are things that where compromise is is, is not going to do any good. Uh, it's going to provide the illusion that we're somehow moving in the right direction when uh, uh, you know we've got things that need fixing uh, substantially uh, and in relatively short order. Uh, or uh, you know things beyond our control are going to begin to uh, are going to direct our future. A couple of thoughts there. I mean, I think in a globalizing world with the changing demographics in this country, one of the things we can't compromise on is um, white supremacy. So uh, you know, I'll just say that, which is why I said what well, I did any about kind of racial supremacy, whether yeah. it's white or black. Oh, but well, you, you know, but we don't have a history in this nation of black supremacy. Well, yeah, we do with the Black Panthers. You know, those sort of organizations. I go back to the '60s. No, they were no, they were not black supremacists. They were black. Uh, well, uh, we can uh, we can disagree uh, about separatists. that. Yeah, you know, they were not supremacists. Well, there was there was a separatist movement there for a while. Uh, separatism yeah, and supr uh, supremacism are are not. Of course, they, and they disbanded in 1982. So, well, yeah. well, so that's uh, they're still not present. Really a, but the other thing I wanted to say in terms of compromise, though, um, Obama has cautioned Trump not to completely roll back Obamacare, and you mentioned some of the ways that it might be reformed, um, and also the Iran deal and the Paris Accords. I don't know that we can compromise on the planet right now. We need to find strategies that um, will allow us to continue to move forward um, and address the ongoing problems with climate change. Um, but the other thing I think we need to watch with a Trump presidency, um, he has considerable wealth and that opens up possibilities for conflicts of interest and you know he is placing um, his Trump organization in trust and it will be run by his children. But some of the conflicts of interest, um, the National Labor Relations Board, the General Services Administration, he's in charge of those even while his assets are being managed in trust by his children. And I mean, one of the immediate issues there is um, the Trump International Hotel being in the old post office building in DC that's leased from the General Services Administration. So there are a lot of things that need to be resolved. Um, he will need to do an annual financial disclosure of his assets. So uh, that's required of all presidents. So as a public, we will be able to keep an eye on that. But I know there was considerable concern about the Clinton Global Initiative and mm -hmm. conflicts of interest there. And I think we need to pay every bit as much attention to Trump's assets going forward. Yeah, one of the things that is being mentioned is, you know, the, the one of the planks in, in the platform is to roll back uh, Dodd-Frank and in the face of the fact that, that Trump owes Deutsche Bank $300 million. Uh, there's plenty of uh, opportunity for mischief there. 
uh, when $300 million is at stake and uh, um, somebody of, 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 of Trump's wealth will fight to preserve that or, or um, have favorable treatment uh, in exchange for perhaps a forgiveness of debt. Oh, but you're criticizing the art of the deal. Well, um, back to something you said earlier, <clears throat> and to uh, white supremacy. Um, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, comment uh, uh, by uh, Bright, uh, by um, uh, Bannon uh, about uh, Bill Crystal, uh, and you said, well, and Bill Crystal's a conservative. Um, yeah. Um, uh, so why would a fellow quote unquote conservative make uh, such a comment? Uh, it goes right to that old uh, Jewish international golden banking uh, uh, conspiracy uh, mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so if uh, if we, if we uh, that needs uh, that needs attention, uh, that'll play itself out. Uh, I, I you know I would think. Um, I, uh, Bannon's a talker. Um, I think nature will take its course. Well, one, of the things, one of the things I'd like to see is not all Republicans are conservatives and not all conservatives are Republicans, but conservatism hasn't adequately uh, defined itself. What is it to be conservative? Amen to that. What is it to be liberal? Oops. Uh, what is it to, uh, to be able to, um, uh, in terms of running the country? You know, I, one of the predictions I have is a discussion about federalism. How strong a federal government should we have? This goes back to the Civil War, back to the Revolution, back to the, the way the Constitution was constructed. Uh, a lot of the regulations that were passed without any kind of legislative guidance, such as um, the fact that the government, the federal government, can regulate uh, a stream on your property, uh, an overreach that uh, could very well be revisited, rolled back, or whatever in some way. Um, so, you know, President Obama gets very defensive about his legacy. Well, that's why we have elections. And if, if some of that or all of that, I don't think all of it, but if some of that is rolled back, that's what elections are about. That's why we do what we do. Um, it would be nice um, if we, uh, reevaluated not just the way that we treat each other but the way that we it would be nice if people even read the constitution wouldn't that be something so far we've we've talked about uh, the the philosophical uh, parts of of the post election um, week let's let's turn to the protests what what's going on there is, is there precedent for this uh, mike you're the americanist you can help us with that uh, is this productive um, what's going to happen? Is this going to continue? What, what can we say about uh, what's going on there? I, I, if, I, if I had to guess, and that's what I'm doing, I, I'd say it has, it's going to have a relatively short uh, lifespan. Uh, I think what it signifies is that uh, there are people out there, it's probably a sign of health too, uh, uh, who uh, want, to, uh, uh, you know, want to say uh, that uh, we're not going away. Um, uh, uh, we're going to uh, continue to uh, battle for the things uh, we believe in, uh, and uh, don't let you know. Don't think to the new Trump administration. Don't think for a moment uh, that uh, uh, you know, uh, we're going to lay down, uh, lie down, and roll over. I got a question. Um, are these spontaneous? Are these all these different cities that they just happen? Is somebody funding these? Is somebody busing people in for these? Where do they come from? I, do you have any, anything on that, Dave or, or Nancy? Um, the, the source of the protest, these spontaneous on campuses? So what's, uh, you know, Ohio State has had a pretty significant uh, uh, series of protests in recent days. Um, my understanding is that the majority of them are spontaneous, but I can't give you specifics on individual protests. I would mention that change.org is circulating a George petition. George Soros, um, who's got lots of money. He's, he's one of those rich guys we don't talk about well, on the left. No, we do talk about Soros. Um, but and we need to. In, in any case, um, the change.org petition um, is to get electoral college voters to follow the popular vote rather than be bound by their 
states, and you mentioned national supremacy and federalism and states' rights. I mean, there is a constitutional crisis, I think, embedded in that. But if I may, um, in terms of sort of nonpartisan organizations and compromise, there is a rally on the Jones House lawn in Boone from 5.30 to 6.30 today for love and solidarity to demonstrate that we are a compassionate community. And um, that's being sponsored by the Watauga County NAACP, which is a nonpartisan organization. What would have happened if, if Hillary had won? Would the Trump supporters have had these protests and, and these kind of things? And if they had, what would the left have said? Well, isn't it kind of odd, actually, that the winners are, are protesting the way they are? I, I don't think we've seen that before. Um, the uh, winners in terms of well, the, losing the, the election the, or what? No, no, the winners um, having won the election, the, the, the Trump supporters, who are continuing the, the fight, it seems, um, in, uh, in attacking uh, protesters and so forth. Uh, but those, some of those have been proven to be not true, and that uh, police investigated at least some that I'm aware of and said that they were made up. What was made up? Some of the uh, so-called attacks on people. Hmm. Um, well, we've seen film. Um, <clears throat> what would the left have said if uh, Hillary had won? I, uh, I, th I think uh, it might have gone like this. Um, there would have been protests against her election. They would have come later uh, if she embraced the uh, pipelines uh, and uh, the uh, uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, and, and all of those. Uh, neither of these candidates were candidates of the left. Right. Um, right. Uh, they were uh, uh, they were center uh, right, uh, if anything. Um, and even though she won quickly. the popular vote, she did concede to mm -hmm. Trump. Yeah. I think that's important. Sure. Right. Yeah. Which is what we usually see. That's our program for the panel. I'm Paul Gates. We hope you'll join us next time on the academics. Why don't we go online?